I'm working on a way to store my quilling strips to where I can just grab what I want and not have to worry about a long enough container to put them in. So these are customizable and what I did was made individual square tubes and that way you can put as many units together as you want for your storage ideas and uh, they're pretty sturdy. Right now I've just got them kind of rubber band together until I decide how I want to uh, configure them. But I also use these page protectors. Uh, there's a lot of YouTube videos on how to make these. And these are nice for the ones that I cut out of my own paper. And they store nicely in folders or in a notebook. But the longer strips are kind of hard to deal with and I don't like to try to put them back in the package that they came in. So these were easy to make, they were fun to make. You could also uh, buy the plastic tubing in a uh, round shape or square shapes. Um, they come in different sizes and usually the small ones like these you can get for about a dollar a foot but it gets pretty expensive once you start paying for shipping and everything so I've got a few of those but these were very easy to make and didn't cost a whole lot. Okay for my tubes I'm using uh, 110 pound cardstock and I'm cutting my strips the entire length of the paper. You would decide how long your, you want your tube to be so and some of them I cut in half because I just wanted to make um, a tube a length and a half and join them in different uh, configurations. So you can choose um, how long you want your piece to be and cut your strips uh, in that way. So just a little simple diagram this is very simple um, to do. If you want a square tube like this little prototype I made this is a half inch on all sides. You would just do five sections of a half inch and they all add up to two and a half inch to cut my strip. And I would make score lines every half inch so that I can fold it into a tube. If you want your tube to be more rectangular, you can decide how wide you want yours. And I have the wrong measurements here. This would be like an inch and um, you would do half inch for your sides or however deep you want the tube to be and then um, say like this one would be an inch, half inch, inch and a half and you'd have one part that's going to be the flap that glues over the top and then you'll have a top and a bottom and then two sides so you would just add up all of your figures and um, come up with the, um, the the width of a strip. So for this one, it would be a three and a half inch strip, and um, that's basically all there is to it. So every other uh, fold line is going to be the same size. Like here, I would have three half inch sections and two one inch sections. So it's very simple. So I used a scoreboard to. Um, make my score lines on my cardstock but if you don't have a scoreboard you can just use a table knife and a ruler and measure out your half inch but be careful um, some of these are pretty sharp and or you can use an empty um, ballpoint pen just anything that you can make nice crisp score lines so that you can fold your piece a little bit easier so you just have to test out how how hard you can press with say like a, a knife like this so you can use anything like that to score with or if you have some of these tools you can use that also so I'm gonna make the rectangular one first and um, I'm gonna do the half inch flap then I'm going to skip over an inch and do, it's going to either be the top or the bottom, it's reversible. And then I'll do one of the sides, which would be a half inch over. And then another inch for the top or the bottom, which is going to leave me a half inch on the other end. 
for another side. So if you were just going to make your tube this long, then you don't have to join any pieces. I'm going to show one that I'm joining. So go ahead and just pre-fold. Mark all of your creases to make it easier. And then we're just going to kind of glue it in half like this to make it easier to press everything down. And then we're going to shape it out after it's been glued. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue that down. And I like to make sure there's no glue past this crease here. You don't want any glue in this area because it'll shut the tube. The tube will be glued shut and you don't want to do that. So I just fold that flat and then smooth that out. I'm using tacky glue because it gives me time to reposition, but yet it grabs on really well. So you can clamp these if you want to with any kind of clothes pins or, or some of these little clips like that. I like paper clips. So I'm going to set that one aside. Now I want to make a long, a long one like this with four different sections. So I would have to make, since I joined uh, an 11 inch piece of cardstock to, um, to another 11 inch one, I need um, eight of these because I need two strips for each of these tubes right there. So I've got a couple of them already cut out. So to score the um, square, the one half inch square tube, I need five sections of a half inch. So this one's pretty simple. And I'm going to make eight of these so that I can glue one. Uh, I chose to have four sections, so you, you can decide how many sections you want. So I need to make eight of these like this. You're going to need four of these little joining strips to, if you're going to join two of these tubes to make a longer one. Um, I save all my scraps like this and then I'll just cut off um, little pieces to um, to join these and you want them to be slightly smaller than these little channels so whatever size you decided to make your tubes um, the joining strips need to be just a tad smaller so that they don't interfere with being able to fold these so we'll put those together in just a second so to join two pieces to make a longer tube, in this case I've got 11 inches and 11 inches for the length of the uh, cardstock. So you can cut your strips to whatever configuration you want uh, for the strips that you're going to be storing in there. So you want to go ahead and pre-crease these. So I'm going to take two. get them ready. We're going to open them out and kind of bump them up against each other really tight, as tight as you can. And then take one of these little strips and put a little glue on them. My glue is a little watery. You don't need a whole lot of glue because we're going to be adding some tape to this. It's just to hold them together and to reinforce that. I tried all kinds of things like fitting the tubes together and it just didn't work. This is working pretty well for me, so you may have better ideas on how to do this, but this is what I'm going with. And you'll need four of these. We're going to leave one of these, the outer edge, we're going to leave it without a joining piece on it. 
just makes it easier to glue the whole thing together, in my opinion. And it doesn't make a big bump there at the join. So I'm trying not to cover up my creases. And that tacky glue grabs pretty quick. I'm going to take some scotch tape and you want to cover up these edges because when you're sliding your your quilling strips in you don't want them to grab onto those edges like that. It would be hard to slide them into the, the tube and it doesn't interfere with my, my folding if you use this thin tape like this. But it makes a nice little runway for the quilling strips strips just to slide right over those bumps. So stick that down really well and then I'm going to fold these again where the tape is. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue this thing flat just like we did on the rectangular one. I'm going to leave this flat free and then just kind of pre-fold everything so that once I get the glue on this flap here it'll be easy just to pull this down. So I'm going to get my little paper clips ready. Let's see, I need more glue than that one will give me. Make sure I don't have any water in there. I keep these on a wet towel so they don't clog up. And then I want to brush outwards because I don't want any glue past this crease. I think I already mentioned that, so I'm going to be careful with my glue. And then just stick that down one section at a time. And then I do the same to this other side. I need to spread that a little bit, especially on the edges. On the corners. These things hold together pretty well because they're not really holding anything heavy. So you don't have to be too picky about it. So I'm going to let this one dry. And I'm going to make three more so I can make my whole um, unit here. Okay, while I'm waiting for my other long strips to dry, I'm going to go ahead and show what the rectangular one looks like. So all you do is just kind of open it out and um, you've got your tube. Now you can decide whether you want your quilling strips to hang out both sides when you decide um, how long to make your tubes. I think it'd be a good idea for the quilling strips to stick out a little bit on each end. But if you want to stand it up like that, you're going to have to create some sort of a little bottom on one end to, um, to hold the strips from falling out the other end. But I'll show a little method of making a bottom in just a minute. All right, these are dry enough, I think, to get started gluing them together. All right, so just open them out and just shape them as best you can. And they, they get pretty square if your um, cardstock is sturdy enough this is pretty easy to do. So I like to make sure all my seams are kind of going in the same direction. I don't know if it's that necessary to do that, but so I decide how I'm going to stick them together 
and then I put glue on one of them. Just kind of spread that around. Line them up. For some reason, sometimes mine don't always line up on the ends, and I don't know if it's because I left too much of a gap or whatever, but you can kind of square this up. And the other thing I like to do is take a paper clip and stick in the ends, and that these big jumbo clips really help to um, square things up on the, on the end pieces. And then you can kind of keep working with it and trying to get that glue to grab. You don't have much time to work with this. So I'm going to keep gluing these pieces till I have four that are glued together because I want to do my units in groups of four. Now this next step is optional but um, you would think that this would be exactly two inches but by the time you make the tubes it's always a little bit bigger so mine's about two and an eighth or about two and a sixteenth doesn't really matter but if your cardstock is not very sturdy this would be a good idea to glue some strips across the top and the bottom like that and um, I think it will help to square things up and also neaten it up a little bit. But I'm going to be um, stacking a bunch of these together like this. So you, you can choose to only do it on one side, which is what I'm going to do. So this one I've already put the strips on there. So I'm just going to do that on one side so that I can stack uh, my others together. So. You don't need a lot of glue for this. It's just kind of to give it a little bit more sturdiness and to get everything to square up. On the others, I cut mine exactly two inches because I really don't want this hanging over the edge like this one is. So I think in the future I am going to go ahead and just cut it exactly two inches so I don't have that edge hanging over. And then you can go ahead and put your clips in the corners to help that to stick down. Let that dry and make as many of these as you need and, and glue them together. But before I do that, I want to show um, how I made little bottoms to go on to the ends of my tubes. Okay, if you want to make a little cap to go over the end of your tube so that your strips don't fall through, um, you measure an extra half inch on each end to the length. So this is about two inches, but by the time you get everything put together, it's a little bit more than two inches, and you want that cap to freely um, slip on there. So I added a little bit extra, and then I want a half inch here and a half inch here. So I cut mine about three and one eighth long. And then I want the cap to come over a half inch this way, plus a half inch here, and a uh, half inch on the other side. So I'll cut that one one and a half inches or just a tad uh, bigger than that. So I've got my little square cut out and I'm going to score some lines to help me form this. So I'm going to do a half inch all the way around. I'm 
then you want to cut just up to this crease mark. Let me just go ahead and fold these. You want to cut right up to the crease mark, two little slits. And that's going to be the part that folds in. And then I'm going to cut an extra little triangle out right there on each one of these end flaps just to make it easier without any bunching in this corner over here. Do the same thing on the other end. You can also cut out the um, you can cut out the, the squares on the end, but I like to do it this way. And then you just fold it up. Put some glue on there. And it should fit over the end of your project like this. You can glue it on or just have it just a temporary thing. So, and I'm struggling here because I didn't glue mine together, but you get the idea. Just glue it all together and stick it on the end of your project. <laughs> 